do you work? What is your motivation for getting up and going to work? This morning I'd like us to look at how we are created to work, what our attitudes should be, and how we are to reflect God on the job. So let's start by looking at how we were created to work. So often we view work as a curse, right? Oh, I know that I easily get into that mindset that work is evil. Why am I being punished to have to go to work? Oh, if I didn't need the money, boy, I'd quit in a heartbeat. For a long time, I believed that work was a sin, right? I thought for sure there'd be an amen. I just want to live the fun life, doing whatever I want to do, just hanging out, going to wherever with friends, just living the fun life. But work is a major part of our lives, and it is important to God. In Genesis 2:15, it says, The Lord God placed a man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. God put man in the garden to work. Adam was given a job to do. This was before sin came into the world and corrupted it. There was work to be done. You know, when I was a kid, which was a couple days ago, uh, this is how I pictured the garden. Adam and Eve lounging around and not having to go to school, not having to go to work. They got to play with the animals, swim all day, get to play tag. Tag, you're at high, run. You know, dodgeball, little dodgeball, eating whatever they wanted. Well, except that one fruit from the tree. I pictured it like being a child with no worries and all play. Beautiful garden, just get to hang out and play. But there was work to be done. There was work to do and things to watch over in the garden. Genesis 1, 26-28, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. God is a worker. He worked when he created the heavens and the earth. We see his work all around us. And he continues to work in this world and in our lives. God is still at work, right? So if we were created in God's image, and if God is a worker, then we must be a worker too. Even here in chapter 1, he gave us a job to do. We were designed to work, create, design, and maintain. So before sin and corruption, we were made to work, and it wasn't a negative thing. So what happened when sin entered in? Genesis 3, 17 through 19. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. So now work went from a beautiful thing to a burdensome and frustrating thing. The curse was not that we have to work. The curse is labor. Hard labor, pain, and hardships was now introduced because of sin. Even though there is sin and we're now cursed with labor, we are still called to work. Our attitudes toward our jobs can be seasonal. There are times that we really enjoy it. There are times where we hate it. There are times where we really like the job, but not so much some of the people that are with us. There are times that we like our co-workers, but not the job. There are times that we really like the money and the benefits, and that's it. There are many seasons. There was a period of time where I was really struggled in my occupation. I had been working for Metro Transit, cleaning and fueling buses on third shift, which I hated third shift. The first years of my marriage, I would literally be passing Stephanie by at 5 p.m. As she was coming home from work, I was going to work. And so we'd wave, and that would be uh, how we saw each other for the first years. So I didn't like the hours. The job was the same thing every night, and I worked with some difficult people. I visioned a different plan for my life, and I felt like I was stuck. 
I was stuck. I was there because the money and the benefits were good. That was it. You know, I wanted to be a pastor so that I could make a difference in people's lives. I wanted to bring Jesus to people's hearts. But here I was, stuck at Metro Transit. That was the plan that I had set for myself, being a pastor. But it went in a different direction. And I remember in 2006, after being frustrated with my job and just wanting to throw in a towel, I sat and I prayed about it. And I asked God to lead me. I wanted to quit and be a full-time youth pastor then. And again, I wanted to bring Jesus to the hearts of the youth. I had become upset with myself, wishing that I would have stayed in college and, and that I wouldn't be where I was at. I opened up to Ephesians 6, 5-9, through 9, and I read it. God touched my heart that night, and I realized that my attitude was all messed up. I just stopped looking at all the negative things. I needed to stop looking at what I wanted and start looking at what God wanted for my life. When I started looking at my job through God's eyes, I realized that this is where God wanted me to be. Instead of looking at it as what I'm getting out of it, I needed to look at how I could give back to God through my job. That mindset changed everything. Now, there were still tough days and days I struggled, but God opened up doors to be a witness to others. And shortly after, in 2007, I went to light rail. And that has been one of the best things. God has used many situations, good and bad, and helped me grow to be a better person, a better leader, and grow closer to Him. The more I relied on, the, on Him, the closer I got to Him. And He has put people in my life that I've made lifelong friends with. And God really showed me that God has called each one of us to be missionaries, and the best place to show Jesus to people is in our workplace and our schools. We don't have to beat people over the heads with the Bible, but showing His love in all that we do, from the little things to the big things. And it's not just our workplace either. It's any job that we do. We can be helping someone change a tire, lawn work, shoveling. Teenagers, <laughs> when you're at school, it's not just about working to get good grades. You have an opportunity to do your best and to let your light shine. Ephesians 6, 5-9 through 9 says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when, when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way, do not threaten them, since you know that he, that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Paul is speaking to slaves and masters, calling them to glorify Christ. The culture at that time of Paul was very different than today. Slavery was universal back then. An estimated third or half of the Roman population were slaves. Slaves were not just manual laborers either, but also educated people like doctors and teachers. Paul is not endorsing slavery. He is simply speaking to the culture of his day in a way that called people to a higher standard. Paul speaks to slaves and the masters to glorify Christ in the workplace. We can use these principles in our workplace. So here's the two principles Paul shares with us. One, we must have the right attitude. Paul starts out talking to the slaves, telling them to obey their earthly masters with respect and fear and sincerity and serve wholeheartedly. Then he tells the masters to treat the slaves the same way. When we are in our workplace or out working, we too need to respect our customers, our co-workers, our bosses, and those around us. We also need to embrace an attitude that we are always doing our best and working hard. It is so easy to justify not doing our best. We can blame it on our managers and supervisors for not knowing what they're doing. I use that a lot. We, we can blame it on our annoying co-worker or customer. But we are called to do our best all the time. We bring God with us to work, and we use our talents and abilities that He has given us. And we develop a confidence in ourselves and in God. We learn to lean on Him more and trust in Him. We start to see the good work that He's prepared in advance for us to do. When we bring God to work, we can only grow closer to Him, especially when we lean on Him during the frustrating times. 
We will be tempted to not do our best or to not do something right. We will work alongside irritating co-workers and bosses. Since we are working in a broken world, then we will be facing tempting and difficult situations. But we have an incredible opportunity to share our faith by the way that we handle those situations. Even when we mess up and we make a poor decision, when we handle it the right way, we can still make a difference. Matthew 5, 15 through 16. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We must bring this to our workplace, in our schools, our homes, in all of our work. God has put us in our jobs, our neighborhoods, our schools for a reason. He has put specific people in our lives for us to share Jesus' love with. The second principle is to remember who we work for. Looking at verse 7 and 9 again, Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with them. Favoritism with them. We are to respect those in authority, but we are to remember who our ultimate boss is. When we approach our jobs with God as our ultimate boss, then we look at our work as service to him. When we work for our earthly bosses, they give us a paycheck for our work. But when we work for our God, we are fulfilling our calling, the work that he has given us to do in this life. And we will be rewarded, which is greater and better than any amount of money or any benefits that we can receive here on earth. When our attitudes change and we are working for God, our jobs become so much more than jobs. We turn our job into a place where we can worship God. Each project that we are doing for him becomes an offering. Romans 12, 1, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. This would also include our jobs, which should be considered as a spiritual act of worship. In Colossians 3, 23-24, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. When we have the right attitude and we are working for God, then whatever we do, big or small, He will take it and He will use it to further His eternal kingdom. And we get to be a part of that. Isn't that amazing? When you think that we get to be a part of that, He gets to use us. We get to be His vessels. And we get to see God at work. We get to watch his plan unfold as it works in other people's hearts and lives. Not always in our timeline or the way we want it, but we get to watch God work. So how do we reflect God at work? By our good work. We are called to reflect the very character of God. We should be reflecting goodness, honesty, faithfulness, integrity, love, and forgiveness. All of our tasks is service to God. A quote by Martin Luther says, The maid who sweeps her kitchen is doing the will of God just as much as the monk who prays, not because she may sing a Christian hymn as she sweeps, but because God loves clean floors. The Christian shoemaker does his Christian duty not by putting little crosses on the shoes, but by making good shoes, because God is interested in good craftsmanship. Is God interested in good craftsmanship? Take a look at the world around us. Look at the intricate design of the wings of a bird so that it can fly. The sun and the moon are just the right size and distance. Look at the platypus and the detail that has. Okay, that was a bad example. But when we look around at his creation, we see all kinds of remarkable and awesome craftsmanship. God did not make junk, so we shouldn't either. We should be giving God our best in all that we do and all that we make. We reflect God in how we do our work how we handle ourselves, the words that we use at work, and the decisions that we make. We are Christ's ambassadors. We represent Jesus to others, and hopefully we are attracting others to Jesus in our workplace. You know, God didn't separate work into secular and then God's special work. He's like, ah, those are the secular jobs, stay away from them, and these are the good jobs. These are the sacred jobs. 
right? He didn't separate them into to sections. God can use all professions. God can use auto mechanics, real estate agents, shoemakers, and bee farmers. God can use all professions. So whatever it is that you do for a living, God wants to use you to bring hope to others. He can use you to be pastors at your job, and you don't even have to say a word. Because I know some of you are like, I don't like to speak, so probably not going to be a pastor at my job. But you don't even have to say a word. You can let your life live out the testimony of Jesus in your workplace. We have an incredible opportunity to bring worship to a work, right? We're all going to leave here today, and then when we go off to work, we're going to bring worship with us, right? However, I have dibs on asking Rachel first, so nobody can ask Rachel to bring her to the job, because I'm going to ask her if she'll come to work with me tomorrow and then play worship songs, like in the background, as I work. So I'm going to bring worship with me and Rachel too. But I challenge you that when you wake up in the morning, before you leave the house, pray for God to work in our attitudes and our motivation for why we work. Ask God to help us protect our hearts and our minds so that when we are dealing with difficult situations or difficult people, we can handle it in the right way and let our light shine. Help us to celebrate the victories, big and small. And before you leave the house, make sure, make sure that you are bringing Jesus to work. Because every day should be bring Jesus to work day. We have an amazing opportunity. So let's not waste our work. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are absolutely amazing. Father, we look around at your creation and the beauty and the craftsmanship in all that you have made. Father, help us to, to remember that wherever we're at, we are serving you and we are, are your ambassadors. So help us wherever we're at, whatever job that we're doing in our workplace, Father, help us to let our light shine. Help us to, to not just take Sundays and let Sundays be worship days and then go the rest of the week. Help us to bring our worship to work, Make sure that, making sure that we bring Jesus with us to work each and every day. Father, you have given us an incredible opportunity, an incredible missionary field. We don't have to go overseas to be missions, which that is great, but we can all be missionaries right here in our communities, right here in our workplaces, helping and working. So help us, Father, to, to draw closer to you and to let our light shine. And may our works glorify you, and may you get all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.